This is a very important recovery that the market is in right now because Bitcoin has managed to go from $56,000 up to $60,000 here. And that means we have successfully punched in a very very spectacular higher low uh, for this little trend in the market here. So we're going to be covering this in terms of what it means, where we think Bitcoin could be going, and the implications bullish and bearish. It's going to be another absolute bang of a video. If you're excited for this, do me a favor and smash up those likes. And I do want to give you guys a very special announcement before we get into this video, which is that I'm actually going to be posting every one of my videos on X from now on. I'm going to make a video about it. I think it's a much bigger deal than most people are um, understanding so far. The link to my X page is here. Uh, and I have actually uploaded an exclusive Tesla analysis video, uh, full length 17 minute video. It's very different to the kind of videos that you usually get on this YouTube channel. It's better, definitely go check it out. But I'll talk to you about that a little bit later on because I think that this price action here needs to be discussed with urgency. Bitcoin is now back up at 59.7 at the time of me recording this YouTube video. And if we look at this on the hourly, I'm sorry, on the four hour uh, time frame, there are only 15 minutes left. So by the time that you watch this video, probably while we're still going right now, we're gonna get that four hour close. And that tells us uh, that we have uh, shown significant strength coming into this market here. I mean, I have seen absolutely bottom of the pit sentiment just over the last 48 hours, ladies and gents. I don't know about you. Let me know how it's been in your world over the last 48 hours in the comment section down below. I'm genuinely very curious to know. I think the fear and greed index sort of agrees with me. We're down to 27, which is just on the border of extreme fear. Uh, obviously, we've been lower just as recently as 10 days ago on the 6th of August, which was here. Uh, so we have been uh, at lower levels. But I do think that we're very low in terms of sentiment right now. I mean, even the most bullish people uh, that well, I don't want to say bullish people, but the people who in my opinion, are just seeing logic for what it is, which at the moment, I think, is telling us that this market is still in a bull market even those people uh have started to show a little of uh, a, a little bit of kind of disbelief in themselves which i think is uh particularly interesting and and we'll be discussing that in this one but yeah beautiful rally back up to horizontal resistance there and i think you know one of the biggest reasons that i'm excited for this you're already going to know about this if you are subscribed shout out to those of you that are and thank you all for showing these videos loves uh love and, and smashing those likes up uh you're gonna know that one of the key indicators we've been talking about um is the ichimoku cloud recently uh and it's because it actually uh has has been you know kind of closing up in terms of resistance right i mean the beautiful thing as we know about the ichimoku cloud is that kind of it, it predicts the future in terms of where we might find resistance and that is just so fucking cool just in and of itself but uh you know the other thing that it does is it kind of it tells us the strength that we can expect resistance right for example uh you know when you get nice big thick clouds like this you can get nice big explosions out of them right uh but when they get a little bit thinner um you know they don't really hold the market back particularly well and when they start to really close up uh that's when you can really start kind of pumping through them so uh it, it's it's an absolutely phenomenal indicator you can watch how resistance or support gets stronger or weaker uh you, you know you can just visualize it in front of you and by the way i think I believe any good analyst, any experienced analyst should be able to do this on their own, just out of intuition. But it takes time to get there. And there's no shame in using a couple of tools along the way uh, to help supplement where you want to get to. But it must be that. It must be a supplement. If it's anything more than a supplement, uh, then you're going to have a reliance. And, and that's a very bad place to be. And actually, the key reason, this is a bit of a detour from the video, but this is why you guys come here, because we're actually all about the real important lessons that we get as traders. Uh, you know, the big problem that you have there is that, you know, eventually, no matter how good your strategy is, the market will turn and the market will start, uh, you know, not responding to your strategy and it'll actually start losing you money. And oftentimes that transition can happen very quickly. Uh, and what I think is particularly interesting about that is that if you have learned how to analyze the market from the ground up already, uh, then you actually have a pretty good chance of adapting uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're going to just know what to look for. You're going to know, you know, when things are starting to change. Uh, and then you'll just have an easy base 
to go from, right? If you need to go from where you are now to a new strategy, it's a lot easier to do that if you can always return back to home base, which is just the normal technical analysis, the super, super basic stuff. It's the only thing really that we ever cover on this YouTube channel. Uh, it's the main thing. And, and that's, yeah, that's what you guys get here. Uh, and, and I think that's really, really important because you really do need to be able to kind of adapt your strategies. Uh, and, and if you have, uh, you know, an over-dependence on any particular strategy or indicator, you're never going to be able to adapt. Uh, and, and that means you'll be a one-trick pony. That's a very bad thing to be in these markets. Uh, you know, you, you'll miss out on a lot of money. But yeah, I think that's important. If you want to kind of get a little bit more information on these kind of things, we go really deep uh, and, and in depth in these ideas uh, within the Four Flies exclusive package. It's a super intense, expensive 12 week program, uh, but we've had phenomenal results from offers we've done like this in the past. Uh, so if you are interested, feel free to reach out to me using this link here. We've actually got the first batch of um, people who've enrolled uh, starting to come to uh, you know the later stages of their 12 weeks now. So it's a really, really interesting time. Uh, so if you're interested in getting in, then you can reach out to us for some information. Um, yeah, with this link down here, but let's come back to the video here because we are now facing that kind of window of opportunity that I think is opening up for this market, uh, potentially allowing us to capture a little bit of, uh, you know, a, an easier opportunity to move up over here. Uh, you know, I like I said, I don't really think that the $60,000 price range is particularly challenging for Bitcoin. I don't think it's a particularly, you know, concerning problem at all. And because of that, uh, you know, I'm not really expecting this resistance level to hold, um, you know, and I think that's important because, well, I said that, you know, in my last video, I said that if we get back up here, I would probably expect that this resistance is a little bit lighter, um, you know, and I'm, and I'm able to say that, I think, because, you know, we've already tested it, you know, a good three, four, five times, depending on how generously you want to count it, um, you know, and, and every time we've gotten below this level before, we got back above it without much trouble. You know, it was never really a challenge. So it's it's the first time now that we're establishing resistance here, which, you know, if that, you know, if that is finally the thing that, you know, ends this thing and then we start trending down, then fair enough. But, um, you know, to me, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that ultimately says, look, uh, if, if there's an overall market direction that's making me money, uh, then I'm not really interested in contesting that and saying that we're definitely coming down to 44K and stuff like that. Uh, because, you know, I, I just, I think that so far, you know, this has made me money. Uh, and if I had, you know, if I didn't have this particular thinking approach, then I would actually be one of many, many, many people that thought, uh, $30,000 was the top. Uh, and if you guys were watching this YouTube channel back then, you're going to remember that all throughout this price range, I was very bullish, even at the lows, because <laughs> I kept reminding you guys about the facts. It's what I do now. It's what I was doing back then. It's what I've been doing for many years before, because we've been doing this on this channel for about six years now or seven years. Uh, we've been doing these kind of videos on this channel now. So that's super, super cool. Shout out to those of you that have been here for a while. Uh, you're going to know that, you know, we've been talking extensively uh, when the price was down here about how Bitcoin was still in an uptrend and still had plenty of room to go. And, you know, a lot of people couldn't digest that idea. A lot of people couldn't come to terms with it. And so they sold their Bitcoins. Now, you know, everybody kind of brushes these stories under the rug, uh, you know, because it's convenient. But I want to make something very clear to you guys. You know, I think that this is something a lot of people really benefit from hearing. There is a lot more pain in being a bear who is wrong, um, you know, than being a bull. There is a lot more pain in missing the train than losing your money. Um, you know, and, and the reason for that is because it's actually, it's very simple math. If you're worth $10,000 now and you want to get to a million dollars, then missing out on the million is a much bigger deal than going from 10K to zero. Uh, because in, in one case you've lost $10,000, but in the other case you've lost $990,000. So, you know, you can hear something like that and you can be like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? That's a horrible way to look at it. And then, you know, I would actually say that perhaps there's an, you know, I mean, you might just not be hungry enough for it is, you know, and, and it sounds a bit silly, but what you notice is that people who really put in the time, we've got something coming out. We've got a trading journal coming out. 
Uh, and I, I won't tell you too much more about it right now until I kind of have some real substance to give you, but most people don't journal their trades, and they're bad traders because of it. And in my experience, many people who do journal them, um, you know, they, they actually turn their game around. Like you don't even need to, you know, I tell you guys about my offers. They're brilliant. They're really, really good, the things that we've uh, offered before uh, and, and even now. But none of what I sell will beat a simple trading journal, you know, with a pen and paper. That's for sure. And that, you know, that how much does that cost? But the thing is, is most people won't do it. So it becomes an ambitious problem, uh, an ambition problem it becomes a motivation problem. Um, look, th there's, there's going to be people on different sides, but ultimately what we see is that many, many people swept this under the rug, uh, you know, kind of being bearish in these ranges and, uh, you know, they've taken themselves out of the market and now they're suffering the pain of being, uh, you know, bulls that took themselves out, you know, or bears that took themselves out. Um, you know, and I think that's why <laughs> there's a lot of bear porn as well. Uh, you know, I think that there are a lot of people who... Uh, expected that they'd be getting better entries this time because there aren't there aren't that many new people right like we, we're all aware of this uh there aren't that many new people in the crypto space right now not yet not you know during this bull cycle i mean look bitcoin went from 15k to 75 which is you know about a four times return but you know when bitcoin did 20k to 60 you know which which was a three times return from all-time high to all-time high that was a three times return right like this this price move here this was a three times gain uh, yet we saw a huge influx of people. I mean, it was absolutely enormous, the amount of people we saw. On this one, we didn't get that many new people. We didn't. And I think that's important. Uh, you know, I think that there are a lot of people in this market cycle today that were in the previous ones, and they wanted better entries, and they didn't get them. And now they're looking for, uh, you know, kind of buying at lower levels. I think that's totally fair, you know? And I think that actually... Bitcoin still has a good chance of getting down there just because it's a good support level, right? And if for no other reason, in my experience, good support levels act as magnets and, you know, there's just always a pull to get there. So that's good enough. Uh, but yeah, like I said, what I'm seeing so far, I can't chalk it up to being bearish. Uh, you know, it's still looking good. It's a new higher low. The only thing we have to keep in mind now is that this has become our invalidation, right? Now, if we get below this level, it's over, right? But if we manage to stay above it, then I still think we're holding pretty well. You know, this is the beautiful thing is you can actually start to kind of simplify your charts a little bit, uh, you know, when you punch in lows like this, because now you have so much more clarity about how low the market really can take it and still be healthy. And this is the new low that we've set. It's higher than the one that came before, which was higher than the one that came before. And so if we lose this level now, it means that we're no longer maintaining that strong posture. So it may indicate further downside. Obviously, you can always argue the deviation, which I think is very, very typical for Bitcoin. So, you know, it does get a little bit more complicated. But, you know, overall, just with basic technical theory, that's a pretty good sign. It gives us a lot of clarity. Now let's talk about moving up. It's been, how, how far are we through this? It's been about 13 minutes. So let's talk about how Bitcoin might move up now. Um, you know, and actually, nope, I'm going to tease you a bit more. Before we get there, daily EMA ribbon uh, continuing to expand, moving down. So there is still a lot of resistance here from this daily EMA ribbon. That's also something which I think is worth keeping in mind. On the four hour, we're just ranging pretty much. So we don't really have anything. And on the hourly, it's not great either. Uh, but yeah, let's move back here to uh, talking about where Bitcoin can go from here. And I think, you know, like I said, I'm not expecting 60K to be particularly strong resistance. I guess I do have a small concern. And it's that, you know, the S&P 500, all the other traditional finance markets, they're going to be closed, uh, you know, basically within like an hour or something. And, you know, if Bitcoin does end up moving up, that means it's going to happen on a weekend. Um, now I'm not I'm not too concerned about that. I think it's for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that obviously everybody has been kind of spooked about, you know, S&P 500 moved up so much over here. But that's exactly when Bitcoin was tumbling down. It just, you know, it looks like Bitcoin did it's catching up today. Uh, that's happened before. You know, I think a lot of people are reading into these things a little bit too much. Um, you know, I've I've had people telling me that because, uh, you know, the S&P 500 didn't uh, you know, moved up, but Bitcoin didn't, like we're in, you know, a bear market now. And I'm like, listen, man, um, you know, sometimes it, it's just an anomaly. And, uh, and, and, and anomalies have happened before many times. So I don't think it's unreasonable at all 
to speculate that we might be looking at an anomaly right now. Um, and, and I think more importantly, uh, you know, if, if it's, you know, if it does happen for a very short period of time, uh, you know, versus if it happens for an extended period of time, it means something very different. And like, you know, like I'm saying, I think, you know, it's just a lot of people, they jump to that conclusion. Uh, because what's really happening, if you if you kind of look under the hood, if you if you lift someone's brain up and just, you know, their, their, their head and just look under the hood, what's really happening is that they're scared and they're trying to rationalize the market. Uh, and, and they've just they've lost faith. They've lost faith. Uh, you know, when you see people like that selling, that's usually when the market uh, is about to skyrocket uh, for one of those final, final um, rallies. Uh, or, or in the last kind of like three to six months of a bull market, when those people sell, they just kick the bucket, they're out of the game. You get that last burst of life out of the bull market, uh, but then they buy back in at the top, and then that's it. Then, then that's, uh, that's a le another lesson learned. Uh, I am talking from experience there. But yeah, I think, you know, resistance up ahead, it shouldn't be particularly challenging. Uh, I'd still be expecting the next zone of resistance at about $64,000. I think that if Bitcoin can get above this particular zone of resistance, then 67k will be the next important level. And I think that both of these resistance levels shouldn't be particularly challenging. Of course, neither should the third one over here, in my opinion. I think that Bitcoin's in a good place. What I'm more concerned about is not where Bitcoin might get rejected, but if it loses this level at all, this is the only thing that would start again, you know, kind of pushing me to think that we're moving down. Uh, and we've just got to wait and see for that. You know, obviously, it's entirely possible that Bitcoin just establishes a sideways range here, which is kind of what I was talking about in my previous video. That would be really painful. We really don't want that. But, you know, if it happens, it happens. Uh, like I say in every video, ladies and gents, I know it's kind of annoying, but I do really believe that these markets now uh, are weighted much more on the S&P 500 and other traditional finance indices and stuff like that, much more than, uh, you know, what we can analyze on the Bitcoin chart. I, I really believe that that's the case. I believe that that's been the case for a long time. And because of that, I just have to expect that, you know, Bitcoin is going to trace the, uh, the S&P 500 or perhaps more accurately, uh, I, I think that it's going to uh, have the inverse correlation with the dollar. And, and this this is actually, uh, you know, what, what I think actually happened, you know, and I was talking to that person who said that, you know, Bitcoin is not moving with the S&P. It's very bad. I was saying, actually, it looks like Bitcoin was moving with the dollar, uh, you know, or against the dollar, and it was ignoring the S&P because Bitcoin has been tracing these moves very, very well. Uh, this move here was when, this was when, you know, I don't know how many of you actually look at this, but uh, you know, if you worry about these things, then you should be looking at it because you're missing out on very important information. But this was very, very interesting because when the uh, the dollar started to move up, so too did the S&P 500. Uh, and I think that's very, very interesting. OK, I think that's very while the dollar was still kind of slowly ranging higher, uh, the S&P was moving up very quickly, very aggressively. So, you know, and, and again, over here, you know, the dollar was moving up and the S&P was moving up. So this is a chart where, you know, the weird thing is not Bitcoin decoupling from the S&P 500. It's actually the S&P 500 decoupling from its correlations and inverse correlations. That's the weird thing. And, uh, and, and I think that's the piece that everybody has been missing. Or I guess I guess they've been seeing it from the wrong perspective. They've been seeing it uh, the wrong way. But. Uh, I think, you know, let me know. Let me know what you think, if, if you think that made sense. Uh, I think that explains it, you know, much more accurately than any other kind of, you know, Bitcoin theory I've heard. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I really hope you have enjoyed this video, ladies and gents. You know what to do if you have. And like I said, go check out that video on X. It is a full length Tesla analysis video uh, where I am. It's a casual conversation with friends. You know, I mean, it's kind of it's like this video. Um, a little bit more to the point. I have been rambling a little bit here. It's a little bit more to the point, but um, it answers a really, really important question. It covers a lot of super, super important knowledge that I think most people don't have because they don't really put the time in. Um, you know, videos like this will, will change the way you view markets. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, that, that represents growth. So I think that's great. All right, with that, ladies and gents, I'll see you all in the next one. Make sure you like, subscribe, tick the bell. Of course, also follow me on Twitter. Uh, I just, you know, I make shit posts. 
um you know talk shit and comment on stuff sometimes you know just just more of me if you're interested in that and uh, yeah i'll see you all in the next one cheers